Hi, I'm Jeannie Dubon and let's get Zebra Strong. So I've had lots of requests for some ideas and tips on how to strengthen wrists and fingers. So I've got a few ideas I'd like to share with you today. So, number one, if you've got a tennis ball or a similar item, I like to use the tennis ball because it's fairly light, um, but if you want to use weights, if you're a little bit more far, further ahead, you can definitely use weights. So, you're going to place the ball, keep the elbow tucked in because this will help keep you shoulder stability, so don't do it out here. Place the ball in the palm of your hand, and obviously we want a good alignment through the wrist, so we don't want bending or obviously dropping. You'll know if you do that because the ball will obviously fall out. So hold it nice and still, just settle in, and you're going to see if you can hold that without obviously moving the ball. And then you're going to, from the back of your body, so not from the front of your shoulder, you're going to try and move the arm forward and back. And obviously I'm doing some stability work in my wrist because the ball ideally isn't moving or bending as I move the arm forward and back. And then if I get more adventurous, I can start to move it around in circles. I can lift it up and down. And the whole time you're getting that feedback as to whether you're really promoting wrist forearm stability um, hand stability. Okay, so that's a good little one. Obviously, do it on both sides. And as I say, as you get more proficient, you can obviously add more weight to it. Now, you can do the next one with a squidgy ball or with a tennis ball, just encouraging some controlled finger flexion and extension. So if you hold the ball again in the palm of your hand, wrap your fingers around it. Now, don't squeeze it so that you get a white knuckle. Just wrap your fingers around the ball and just enough to create some pressure. And then very slowly uncurl the fingers. So we wrap them in and we uncurl. Okay, so it's a little bit of finger flexion and extension with control. The slower you go, the better it will be. So that's number two. Okay, and if you've got one of those squidgy therapy balls, obviously you can give it a little bit of a squeeze, but don't squeeze with the tips of your fingers. The power's got to come through the hand and eventually into the finger. So it's not a finger squeezing exercise, it's a wrapping and contracting the whole structure exercise. Okay, so that's a little bit with a ball. If you've got a table in front of you or you know, rest your hands on a book, the really good thing to do is to keep the hands resting and see if you can lift one finger at a time. A bit like playing the piano. And you can obviously mix this up and do different combinations, okay? The other option is to abduct and adduct the fingers by taking them apart. I find this really challenging. So can you move all your fingers apart? So that one there is a little bit challenging for me. But again, you're working on those ligaments. Again, try not to hyperextend the hand and do this. Try and keep it nice and soft and see if you can just move those fingers in and out, harder than it looks. And you can obviously do both hands together if you're getting more confident with it and more controlled. Very good if you've got very mobile thumb joints. Don't go to end of range. Keep it nice and controlled here. Okay, now my final one, um, you'll need a sheet of paper. Now, um, I saw this somewhere. It's not one of my exercises, but it wasn't for hypermobility, but I thought it would be a great little exercise for us for hypermobility. Um, I think if you're hypermobile and your fingers are particularly sore, you might need a friend to help you with this one, okay? So, isometric finger control. You're going to put the paper in between a couple of fingers, doesn't matter which ones to start, okay? Think about your alignment again. And then somebody, or you, are going to try and pull the paper out of your fingers. So you have to contract those muscles in the finger joints to stop the paper obviously doing that. Okay, so that's the objective. Can I keep the paper still while somebody's pulling on the bottom if I can't pull it for myself? And then I'm just going to work my way through 
And honestly, it's harder than it seems because it's not the sort of thing we do, especially if you've got very hypermobile joints. Um, it's a great one because it's very, very challenging. And you, you'll feel the little um, joints and ligaments really working there to stop the paper being pulled. And if you've got a hypermobile thumb joint, this is a good one as well. If someone pulls, you'll really feel that the joint is having to do some stability work. Um, so I hope that's given you some ideas on working on wrists and fingers um, for hypermobile joints. So until next time, stay zebra strong.